who seem to be operating in Libya are African mercenaries roaming the streets of Tripoli and elsewhere, flown in by Gaddafi himself, hired with some of the oil billions still at his disposal. Gaddafi has gone farther than any other dictator in these last month or so to maintain power. But if he outdoes the others in bloodlust, he is no different when it comes to simple dishonesty. The antidote is simple truth. And in this case, tonight, it's from a woman in Tripoli. You heard part of the conversation earlier. Here's the rest of what she had to say. Are there still mercenaries on the streets? We hear gun gunshots in the streets. We hear, mostly at night, we hear gunshots in the street, but we are too scared to look outside into the balcony or into the outside in the window. You know, I mean, I, you know, Tripoli is very big, different parts of town. We try to keep contact, you know, with um, my cousins all over the city, different aunts or uncles' house, whether from my mother's side or my father's side. And so we hear of many different areas. There are some areas that have been hit hard. Uh, before, the, the day before, um, they go outside and like a protest. But really, it's not really protest because pro when you go protest, you can voice your opinion. And maybe sometimes, like we see, you know, before in Egypt, you know, they throw at them water, they throw at them gas. Here they shoot you in the head, in the heart. I, I have a brother, he went outside in the protest. But this is now, uh, yani, this is uh, over three days ago. And... We had friends died, relatives died. We, we are in state of very high stress. Uh, yeah, but also mourning. But we can't even think straight. We're just, I, I don't, you know, like you experience loss and you experience sadness and you experience stress. And the problem is, like last night after the first speech, the video speech, not the speech now happening, happening just a, a while ago. You know the speech, the one in the video? Yes. Yes, I understand. The speech. He, he, yeah, he's talking, and of course he's crazy, and he's talking like a crazy person, but what he's, he's scaring us because he, talk, he said he gave us like a, like a um, final word, ultimatum. He's saying, you know, I will go to each house, to each person, to each zenga, to each, you know, to each, like a fight to the end, you know. And, and he, he says, I give you guys 24 hours, you know, and and then, I, so, we are, you know, this, as much as, you know, we can't believe what he's saying, but this is very scary when, when you hear this. And the problem is, you know, uh, Mr. Anderson, I know you are, I'm sure you are a very educated man, but I, I just want to explain something, or at least explain to people who are listening, or maybe they, they don't know too much about Libya or, or about Tripoli, or I don't know how much uh, coverage of, of the, what is going on in my country here. In Tripoli, it's a very big city, and he is controlling the city he doesn't care even out, you know outside we see all this and really he doesn't care about these places outside uh Benghazi, Tobruk, Ghiryan, Musrata, all these I'm naming you you know places not that's not inside Tripoli he doesn't care about this because Tripoli this is where the embassies are the companies and this is what he wants to keep a hold on he doesn't care if, if if they have, if he lose control outside or not, to him the most important thing is my city, the capital, Tripoli, and he doesn't want to let go. He doesn't understand. He doesn't care. He he just killing the people. You told my producer before that you've reached the end point. What do you mean when you say you've reached the end point? Everybody has had enough. We've had enough a long time, not just this last week or this month or this year or even before things happening internationally in neighboring countries. We've all, we've all had enough. But what I mean in the end point that I don't care. Like, like I'm talking to you now. You know, this is not safe for me. It's not safe for you my You know family. you're taking a great risk but right now. You know you're taking a great risk. A great risk. And I ask, I ask of you in CNN and anybody to please just come and see what is going on. You know, because even though this is great risk on anybody who comes inside of Libya, but it, you cannot believe 
as much as we we don't even know how many people died. I'm expecting, not because I'm overestimating, but when we know how many people died, I just keep hearing the names. Names. I'm making a list of paper of each time I hear of people dying, and we can't even get the bodies. We, we don't even know who we should uh, say. I'm sorry for the loss of some your, your family member. We cannot move. We cannot do anything. And the problem is, nothing will change in Libya unless drastic, important measures taken from outside. Because this man, he's crazy. He doesn't care about you. Already see, you already understand. He doesn't care about his people. He doesn't care if I die. He doesn't care if he burns the whole city. He doesn't care if all of us in Tripoli we die. All of us in Libya we die. He doesn't care. I don't. He said this in his speeches. He, he is not even just saying. He is doing. His his action is is telling you what what's happening. He doesn't care. He wants us all to die. And I, the I can only hear... way we can fix this is if somebody takes action. If you just make Libya no fly zone. He's bringing African mercenaries because he has so much money. He can buy people with money. They don't care. They go inside to kill us, to rape us. To destroy our country, to enough. I don't want to keep you on the two on, on the phone for too long, just for for safety reasons. So please stay safe, and and we'll tr we'll talk to you tomorrow. Thank you, Mr. Anderson, and I I hope I was able to. I hope you understand me, and and thank you for your patience with me. And thank you, CNN, and thank you, America, for listening and for caring. Thank you very much. Stay strong.